So you mentioned there's no test to confirm accurately if you've had a previous COVID-19 infection. I think probably a question a lot of people have is what about the antibody, you know, serology test? And there's even new, from my understanding, a new test that uh, I think Quest has out that gives some quantitative result to the antibody test, kind of gives an antibody titer to some degree. And um, so is that something that, it, you know, if someone's had documented COVID-19 and they, they have antibodies on a test like that, can they breathe a little sigh of relief that they, you know, according to your data published in science, maybe they will have robust immunity for six to eight months? Yeah, really good question. And I guess to, 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 to parse it in, in two, there are good tests to tell if you have had COVID before, but they haven't been implemented consistently across across the population, right? And so people have, there, there are a, a variety of different uh, definitions and tests that have been used and, and some are better than others. Um, in terms of COVID immunity, there's also, uh, there's no there's no clear cut straightforward test for for COVID immunity um, either. That is, uh, if you are going to be protected from this virus um, over the next six months uh, or, or a year, um, <clears throat> uh, I think the scientists are generally in agreement that if someone has a high level of neutralizing antibodies currently. Uh, that they will have a high degree of, of protection um, and that that will be maintained for a significant period of time because the the antibodies drop um, relatively slowly. Uh, but a neutralizing antibody assay is a, is a sophisticated assay. It's, it's, it's a lot of work and not, not generally implementable um, for people. So you can take uh, a surrogate of, of that, which are, um, uh, which are antibody antibody binding assays. Um, but then those are also measuring different things. And some of them are pretty measuring things pretty close to neutralizing antibodies. And some of them are measuring things pretty far away from neutralizing antibodies. So uh, most of the neutralizing antibodies, well, the neutralizing antibodies are pretty much all against spike, right? But they're mostly against the RBD domain of spike. So one little piece of spike. Um, and so if you measure antibodies to that RBD domain, that's a pretty good indicator of, of neutralizing antibodies if you've if you've then made a scale right and directly scaled it to neutralizing antibodies. Um, and I don't know of commercial tests that that currently do that. Um, uh, it, it is scientifically doable, and if you did it for everybody in the country, you you'd have a pretty good measurement of. Of, of antibody mediated protection. But a lot of the tests measure a totally different protein, um, nucleocapsid, which has nothing to do with neutralizing antibodies. And you might have a really high nucleocapsid antibody titer and, and have a terrible neutralizing antibody titer because the, the two aren't directly related. Um, and what we've said be, beyond that is antibodies are great. And if you have a lot of antibodies, you have, you have a very good chance of being protected. But if you, uh, and most vaccines have uh, successful vaccines elicit high titers of neutralizing antibodies. But if you if you don't have high titers of, of antibodies, um, are there other things your immune system could be doing that are still going to protect you? And maybe not protect you from infection per se, but protect you from getting sick or getting very sick or, or going to the hospital. And that's where um, the memory B cells come into play and the different kinds of T cells come into play. And, and what we've seen is that individual people have complicated patterns of those. People might have a relatively low amount of antibodies, but a lot of memory B cells and a lot of CD4 T cells. And we don't know how well those exactly uh, would, would protect people. We think there's a reasonable amount of data from a variety of different directions that would say, yeah, those, that immune memory would do something to help those people out. Um, uh, and so again, at the population level, it looks pretty good even when people have relatively low antibodies. But at the individual level, that's meaning the immune responses are pretty complicated and, and there's no simple test to read out on that. And so what we said in our paper in Science um, was that, uh, okay, if we measure the antibody response in a person, is that predictive 
of the memory B cell and the different T cell responses in the people. And unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, those different arms of the immune system look like they're being regulated differently in different people. So somebody might have quite a low antibody titer. They, they might look lousy from an antibody test, but they might actually have pretty good T cell responses or vice versa. And so um, uh, all of those things together say currently there, there is no simple test that you can implement for people that will tell them um, what's my what's my level of COVID immunity if you put it on a scale, right? Am I sort of in a green zone, a yellow zone, or a red zone? Um, uh, and, and scientists are working, you know, very hard to try and get that information. Uh, but it won't be surprising if it's five years from now before we really understand the whole combination of different ways the immune system can, can protect you from this virus. Uh, and then we open up the whole Pandora's box of variants, uh, right, at, at this point and say, okay, it, everything we've been talking about is against the original SARS-CoV-2 and certainly everything that was in our science paper and virtually everything that's been published on, uh, on reinfections, um, and the studies that I referred to. Um, studies that were designed to study reinfection um, uh, have, have pretty much all been looking at the, the original strain. And again, there's lots of memory to that and there's lots uh, at the population level, lots of protective immunity to that. Um, but there is very good reason to be concerned about several of these, uh, several of these variants that, that immunity might be significantly lower.